Today we're going to summarize the personal finance series with a hip pocket class on how to build wealth. We'll also talk food for thought and PT, and I'll introduce a new segment called Provisional Rifle Platoon Commander. I'm Simon the Zealot, and you're watching Beyond the Crossroads. Let's kick it. Today we're starting with food for thought again to get us in the right state of mind for the big idea. This thought was written by Apostle Paul and goes as follows. Everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible, but I will not be mastered by anything. What this means is that you have options, but not all options are equal. What you can do isn't what you should do. Decisions have consequences, and making the best decision out of all the possible decisions can yield growth in your life. Conversely, making poorer decisions can incur costs. Making repeated lesser decisions can weaken your resolve and discipline, which opens the door to bad habits and potentially addiction. Remember, there are only two billets on the bus of life, the driver and the passenger. If you are not driving your own life, something else is. Think of it this way. You can say yes or no to each opportunity that presents itself. If you are always saying yes, you spread your yeses thin and they mean less. But if you reserve your yeses for the best opportunities, each of those yeses will mean more. Reserve your yeses and you will hit harder with each one. Now put that thought on the back burner and consider this other idea. There are three spheres that exist in your life. The first is your sphere of influence. This is everything within arm's reach. That is, whatever your words, actions, or decisions can impact is within your sphere of influence. The second sphere is your sphere of concern. This is everything that your hands can't touch, but your mind does. That is, you spend time thinking about it, but can't do anything to change it. The third sphere is the sphere of non-concern. This is everything that you straight up don't care about or know about or don't spend any time thinking about. With that in mind, I want to ask you a question. What comes first, the king or the kingdom? The reason I ask is because if you want to build anything resembling a kingdom or an empire in your life, you need to access your inner king. And while you might not have dominion over much right now, you have a sphere of influence, like all of us have, and that includes dominion over your decisions. Your sphere of influence is your little kingdom. Your sphere of concern is foreign territory, and your decisions are the way that you build vertically and expand horizontally. What this means is that the vast majority of your thoughts, actions, and decisions should be focused on where they have the most leverage, in your sphere of influence. You are wasting resources if you spend any significant amount of energy on things outside of your control. A king is a king in his mind first. A good king aligns his decisions with tried and true principles, then projects those principles onto the world around him. A bad king disregards principles and acts out of some other motive, which inevitably leads to strife and failure. I can't make your decisions for you, but I can illuminate principles that will enable your kingdom to grow. Specifically in this video, the growth we are talking about is growth of your finances. One of the ways to build your kingdom is by building and maintaining material resources. Not for the sake of having resources, but for the sake of accomplishing the goals that you have set for yourself. Remember in my introductory video on personal finance, I said that the first question you should ask yourself is, what am I trying to accomplish in life? The main purpose of personal finance then is to align your current decisions with your future goals. Because if you make your current decisions in light of your future goals, these decisions will allow you to accumulate the resources that will make accomplishing those goals possible. You should steer your finances by using your goals as a reference point. 
and then you want to travel in as straight a line as possible. To do this, you need a framework of only four words, know, save, grow, and give. Let's break this down. We'll start with no. The most important thing, again, is to know what you want to accomplish in life. Without goals, you're functionally lost. The next thing to know are your income and expenses. How much do you have coming in and how much do you have going out? Where is it coming from? Where is it going? The last thing to know are what I call force multipliers. These are opportunities to earn more or spend less. Here, I'm talking about something like a military discount. If a business is willing to give you a 10% discount, that's an opportunity to keep more of your hard-earned money. If you're paying full price where savings are possible and worthwhile, you're the sucker. If you're in a state of ignorance on any of this, you must move from ignorance to awareness by way of review or I could say reconnaissance. Take inventory of your financial life. Doing so will arm you with the knowledge necessary to put together a plan to either restore order to your finances or streamline your finances so that you are eligible to accomplish your goals more quickly. The next step to building your kingdom is to save. If knowing is planning, then saving is execution. Remember the financial diet analogy. If you bring in more money than you let out, you will gain financial weight. The way to create and increase the disparity between what you take in and what you let out is twofold. First, control your spending. Second, cut debt out of your life. The more you keep, the quicker you increase in financial weight. The only other thing that I will say about controlling your spending is it's not just about buying less. It's about making prudent purchasing decisions by knowing and reviewing your options. Once you've begun building momentum towards your financial goals, you may decide to try and accelerate your growth through investment. I'm calling this step grow. Growing your money means looking for opportunities to have your money work for you instead of just working for your money. It comes with the risk of loss, so you have to consider if the risk is worth the reward. Whatever you do, make sure you are well informed. The last step is give. This means to surrender money to a cause from which you do not expect to see a financial return. I didn't do a separate video on this step because the basic idea is simple. Charity is a reminder that your life is not all about you. Practically, it allows you to touch the things on the outer reaches of your sphere of influence. You probably don't have the resources to solve some of the bigger problems in the world, but you can personally move the needle a tiny bit towards a more desirable state by giving. To summarize, it takes only four steps to build the financial strength of your kingdom. Know, save, grow, and give. But be on your guard. Simple does not mean easy. These four steps require tremendous discipline and foresight to execute. If they were easy, everyone would be rich. To wrap this up, let's look at a real life example of all of these principles coming together. Never, never do I do that, never. That's such a waste of money for something that costs 20 cents. I never buy a frappe latte, blah, 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 woof, 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 for 250. That's such a waste of money. I drink coffee one cup every morning. It costs about 18 cents to make it, and I invest the rest. You buy crap you don't need every day. Stuff that you look at now in your closet you haven't worn in two years. It felt like a good idea when you bought those shoes, but now you don't need them. What I've learned to do, and what's really helped me in maintaining growth in my own personal investing is, every time I pick up something I'm gonna buy, I say to myself, do I really need this? Because if I don't buy it, the money is going to be invested and make money every year for me while I'm sleeping. So I don't buy a lot of crap. I buy good stuff that I need and I invest the rest and it works. With all of that in mind, go out and conquer. Let's move. 
Today's PT is a six by six, which means six exercises of your choice for six rounds. Typically 30 seconds on, 10 seconds off. This workout is inspired by Tabata and you can exercise an entire company with it. The document is on the drive and the Tabata doctrine video is linked below. Good day, Commander. By the end of TBS, a second lieutenant in the Marine Corps is a provisional rifle platoon commander, which means that he should be able to conduct at least basic infantry operations. In this segment, I'm going to give you an introduction and a head start to that role. Now, I'll stick to the OCS and TBS publications and update as necessary with things that are going on in the Marine Corps right now. So let's start with the absolute basics by reviewing the smallest tactical unit in the Marine Corps infantry, which is the fire team. A fire team is unofficially made up of two buddy pairs, which will be important later. A fire team is composed of four Marines, each having a defined role in the fire team. These four roles are Rifleman, fire team leader, automatic rifleman, and assistant automatic rifleman. These four roles are also known as ready, team, fire, assist. The ready is typically the most junior marine and leads the formation in movements. The team is the most senior and controls and leads the fire team. The fire is the marine with the automatic weapon whose foremost job is to provide suppression on the enemy. He is typically second in command. The assist is the fire's right-hand man and supplies ammo to the automatic rifleman. Now the fire team leader carries a grenade launcher on his rifle and the automatic weapon for the fire team used to be the M249 saw. The Marine Corps has replaced the saw with the M27 infantry automatic rifle and in fact is moving towards equipping every Marine with an M27. As for ops terms of graphics, here is the symbol for the fire team and the symbols for each individual member of the fire team. That's it for today's show. Any comments, questions, requests, or suggestions, let me know. And as always, remember, it is not about you. Stay hungry, stay humble, Stay out of trouble. Take care. I'm about to drop the hammer.